you keep fish, your gills will be going in a second. We're asking a big question. Are aquariums fish prisons? Leading animal rights campaigners have called for all aquariums to be shut down and their fish released back into their natural habitats to enjoy the open seas. But some say aquariums are vital for educating people about the ocean and to boost funding for wildlife conservation projects. We're joined now by proud, proud home aquarium owner John Elwell and animal rights advocate Jennifer White. Good morning to both of you. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Jennifer, then, are you really saying we should get rid of all aquariums? I mean, is this a, a realistic aim, do you think? Morning, thanks so much for having me on. Um, well, we know in the UK that most of the fish and marine animals that we see in aquariums have actually been stolen from their homes in the wild. And that's just not right. You know, these animals are meant to be swimming free when, in fact, in aquariums, they spend most of their time in tanks that are just far too small and could never replicate what their natural homes would be in the wild. So whether that's from lack of space, you know, the, these fish are suffering. And a lot of the time, they don't have enough environmental enrichment in their tanks they don't have enough spaces where they can hide if they're feeling stressed um so of course you know there's absolutely no reason for these animals to be kept in these unnatural conditions when we know that they're from some of the world's most lush environments you know these animals are meant to be in the great barrier reefs of the world they're not meant to be in a glass tank in britain i mean jennifer i'm a big fan of leaving the oceans be i think it's great for our ecosystem but on the other hand you know from a conservation point of view if we were to put all those fish back into the sea, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and a lot of funding actually does come from people going to aquariums. You know, a big part of the ticket sales and the gift shops actually get put back into protecting the oceans. Well, we know that actually aquariums cause a lot more harm than, than good a, a lot of the time because 79% of the animals that you see in aquariums have been taken from the wild. So not only is that incredibly destructive going into coral reefs, um, you know, these fragile ecosystems where all these animals live together, but the fish themselves, they are torn away from their families. They're put in these tiny boxes, transported across the world. So it's hardly surprising when you hear that thousands of these animals actually die on these journeys every single year. Year. So what we can start doing is phasing out aquariums. You know, these facilities can stop breeding animals. They can stop taking more animals from the wild. And then that money can go to preserving their natural habitats. You know, human destruction in the world's oceans at the moment is horrific from trawlers to oil spills, you know, the fishing industry in general. Um, so really, they can get all the, you know, they need all the help they can get at the moment, really. Well, John, uh, Jennifer makes a strong argument there. 79% of fish in aquariums are caught in in the wild. How do you feel about that? I can see you yeah. obviously keep fish. Yes. Uh, I think the biggest consideration that she's probably overlooking is the fact that diseases will adjust in captivity. So diseases will make the slightest little change, which will mean that can be a little bit more effective in captivity. The biggest issue you would have in the release of uh, fish from aquaria would be you would potentially be introducing a disease the wild fish have got absolutely no immunity to. So you could, you could risk an ecological disaster and wipe out a whole food chain. And what about from an educational point of view? I, I can't lie, I've taken my son to a number of aquariums. It's always a great joy for him learning about fish. I mean, if, if we didn't have aquariums, where else would we see fish life? Yeah, I was, I was just talking to a member of the staff from the zoo about this, from the aquarium about this. We get to see uh, fish and other animals on TV, which is brilliant, but I do feel a majority of conservationists and future biologists will be inspired by seeing it in person. It's important to be able to view these sort of things in person to bring their issues at the front of your mind. Without that, people will just people may care, but it will be at the back of the mind, and you will have less, less conservationists, less biologists, less zoologists as a result. Yeah, Jennifer, picking up on that point with you, I mean, it's true, isn't it, that for a lot of people, they're never going to have the experience of seeing fish, marine life in their natural habitat, that actually seeing it in an aquarium is the only way that they're going to be able to appreciate some of the amazing fish that we have out there and, and spark their interest in wanting to protect them and look after them. 
I mean, I, I don't think we have any right to expect to see these animals. And of course, if, if we do want to see them, it should be in their natural habitats. And there's absolutely nothing educational about taking children to an aquarium, for example. You wouldn't take children to a prison to learn about how a human society functions. So why on earth would you take them to a prison for fish? Um, there are so many amazing documentaries children can watch. Or, of course, you can take them out into the wild and, you know, children can observe fish in nature. But I don't think we need to we don't need to consider this as something that we are entitled to see and you know there's so much we can learn about these animals in ways that don't um compromise their their welfare and I mean, what about john's point there sorry what about john's point there about if you release them all into the wild that actually that could be spreading diseases that they're used to being in captivity that that puts ecosystems at risk in itself yeah, of course, rewilding programs are complex and they have to be treated incredibly carefully. But where there's a will, there's a way. And certainly for some species, uh, like orca whales, for example, they could be released from SeaWorld into sea pens where they'd be able to have some semblance of a normal life. Um, but I think, you know, the, the bigger issue here is that we should be looking about how we can start to phase out aquariums so that no more fish are either bought and sold into this industry or are removed from their homes in the, in the wild. Um, isn't there a compromise here, though? And what is it? Well, I think, you know, th this isn't going to be happening overnight. Aquariums aren't going to shut their doors instantly. Um, but the best thing that we can do for fish who are so intelligent, there are scores of scientific research saying how fish are intelligent, sentient animals. They feel pain and love just like any other animal. Um, and yet we keep them in these, these tiny glass tanks when really they should be swimming for miles in the oceans. You know, it's, it's pretty archaic and outdated. Um, and it's just it's not the way the times are heading. John, could you see a compromise where, you know, perhaps sort of the smaller tanks were maybe discouraged and actually it was only the larger aquariums that could properly support fish in a, in a semi-natural environment? Would that work? I can sort of understand the point, but we've got to understand that it's zoologists and biologists running these facilities. So they will, they'll only put the animals in an environment they feel they're going to be safe in. OK, well, listen, thank you both for joining us this morning. That's John Elwell and Jennifer White. And uh, I think no there'll be a lot of questions, won't there, after that? Get in touch with your thoughts this morning. We'd love to hear from you.